Welcome back to Jatai Academy. My name is Russell Mays and today we're going to be doing a dry haircut on some blown out straight hair. So the whole idea behind this haircut is that my mannequin head has a, a mountain of hair. And so for those clients that have a lot of hair, I want to keep it thick, but I want the ends to be really, really soft and flowy. So I'm basically going to go over each section twice. First starting out with uh, my main section, occipital bone to mastoid with a natural or center part. Comb the center of that section straight down. And now with my kill toe scissors, which is the sharpest pair that I have, I'm going to go through and deep point cut each section. Now I'm not just point cutting just the tips, I want to go in fairly deep and thin as I'm cutting the length across. And I'll go back and forth until I get this as even as I can. And I want to just be very, very patient and very diligent and make sure that I have an even amount of point cutting across the entirety of the section. Meaning that I don't want one side of the section to have a choppier type of point cut. And I don't want another side having a more wispy, thinned out type of point cut. I want to be as consistent as possible. And I'll just work left side, right side, and keep going across until I get everything nice and clean. Now on this haircut, I want to keep the edges very, very soft, and so that's what this point cutting method is about. I want to try to control as much weight removal as I can, and I'll probably have to go back in and cut this a couple of times and make sure that it's nice and even on both sides. Now to keep the movement very neutral, you'll notice that I'll cut with my scissors angled to the left and then go back and clean it up with my scissors angled to the right. That's going to keep the movement of my point cuts very, very neutral. If I keep the point cutting all in one angle, it will tend to all move in that same way. So now I'm going to take this whole section of the nape, hold it straight up, and point cut the top layer of this section shorter. And by point cutting it as well, just like I did on the bottom, but by point cutting this and pulling it up and putting some invisible layers in the nape, I'll remove some of that bulk out of the nape section and give it a little bit more mobility and a little bit more flow. Because this hair in the back of the head tends to get very, very thick, so I want to remove a little bit more by putting some internal layering in it. So after I've gone through and done this, you'll notice that this, the line is still straight and that layering is completely invisible. Now we're going to go through and take from the drop crown to the high point of the ear, the section right on top of the ear, and that's going to be the same angle as my occipital to mastoid. I'll cut that section in half and pin all this out of the way. So I've got the same section on both sides. I'm going to start in the center again, comb down, and follow my previous guide. Still very featheringly point cutting this section to keep the weight out as much as I can with my cut line. And I'm just going to follow this same kind of pattern and methodology until I get all the hair cut the same length all the way around. Working from the center to the right and then to the left and then moving on up with each subsequent section. Now I find that I, I tend to get really impatient when I'm doing this because it's a lot of repetitive motion. So I have to really focus and concentrate and make sure that I keep maintaining the same kind of scissor stroke all the way throughout the entire haircut. This is the final section of me cutting my entire perimeter line. And I just cut it the same length all the way around. Now from here I'm going to go through and take a little bit between the drop crown and the mastoid and the occipital bone, section that off. And now with my uh, Tokyo thinning scissors, I'm going to go through and point cut with the thinning scissors a little deeper than I was point cutting with the scissor. 
because the straight scissor I was cutting my length, this I'm only removing weight. So by going through and point cutting at an angle, I will diffuse that thinning and make it completely seamless. And it's just going to focus the thinning exactly where I want it to be, and that's going to be on the ends. Because this whole shape, I want to maintain a solidity and a fullness to it, but I just want the edges to be soft. Now, as I do each section, I want to maintain very, very clean sectioning. So as I do this, I'm going to pin it out of the way because that hair has already been thinned. So the next sections that I go and I thin out those, I don't have to worry about re-thinning sections that I've already thinned. So by being very diligent about my sectioning, I can go through and keep that from over thinning certain sections and under thinning other areas. And, and keeping it as consistent as possible is imperative with this. Get that hair out of my scissor. There you go. Perfect. Now once I finish thinning all the perimeter shape, then I'm going to go through and start sectioning out my bang section to the high point of the ear. So right where I would normally section the bangs, I'm going to take that all the way to the top of the ear. And this is going to be all the layering that's going to frame the face. So I'm going to comb this section straight down. I'm going to resist the urge to, to want to pull it forward. If I pull it forward, I introduce movement and make it feather back. Where here, I want to keep everything as solid as possible. So I'm combing it straight down angling my fingers and following those fingers down from the shortest piece that I chose all the way down to that length of my perimeter that's right above the ear. And I'll just be very, very patient and very diligent with whittling this shape down. And you'll notice that I'm cutting from the center of the face, the top of the face, down to my perimeter length. So I have to move my scissor up and cut from the root of my finger all the way out towards the tip as opposed to normally cutting from the tips into my hand. So this way I can match the movement on both sides of the head going from shorter to longer. I want to try to keep my scissor movement the same going from shorter to longer on both sides of the head. It's hard enough to get the sides to match as it is. I don't need to introduce any kind of indiscrepancies or inconsistencies as I'm applying my cut line. So now after I've got the face framing like I want, I'm just going to comb everything down, see what hangs over what I've already cut, and it's usually only going to be a little bit at the bottom of my face framing, right around the front perimeter of my baseline. Same thing on the other side, combing straight down a natural fall, starting from the center, working towards my perimeter shape. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Click the bell for notifications for any kind of future videos that we put out. We tend to put out quite a bit of content, so to keep you up to date, that would be fabulous, and it would really help us out. Thank you so much. So now continuing on, going from short to long, center right at the tip of the nose, all the way down, just whatever that length happened to be, working it down to my perimeter shape, trying to match it on both sides as best I can. And it just comes with practice. Now here I'm not using any tension at all. I just comb it in my hand to give me kind of a palette to, to comb the hair on and cut, a, cut my line down and clean it up. Now after I've done my face framing and I got everything done there, I'm going to take my bang section, but I'm going to take a little further back. So after I take my section, I'm splitting it in the center. Now whatever that angle is right there at the parting where I parted it for my bangs, I'm going to match that line as I cut it around the front. So I'm pulling this section off the peak curvature of the head, which means if I was to lay the comb right at the scalp, you'll see exactly how it needs to be elevated. I'll pull that forward, point cut that through, and then continue that section by section by section as I work to the back of the head until I run out of hair. Now right here is a really good example of the peak curvature of the head because you can see exactly how it's supposed to come off of the head as I'm pulling it forward to cut it. 
following whatever my guide length was from underneath and following that through. Be sure to check out our other social media accounts. You can find all kinds of good content on there as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check it out. All right, continuing on. Now, it's going to be shorter at the top of the head and then gradually get longer. And I want to make sure that I don't pick up hair on the other side of the head. So you notice I split it in the middle in the beginning. I'm going to keep the left side on the left and the right side on the right. And if I happen to cross over due to the angle of my parting, that's okay. Just don't pick up hair on the side that you're not supposed to be cutting. If I'm cutting on the right side, I'm only going to pick up hair that's on the right side of the head. Now here my sections are continuing to go back. My mannequin head keeps wanting to come forward, but you got to keep it diligent, be patient, and methodical with your application. Work that through. There you go. Good angle of what we're doing here. Now there should be very little hair that reaches here and there's not a whole lot. Just a little whisper right through there it blends pretty well my last section I think on this side because none of the other hair is going to reach I pull that up follow the curvature of the head and you'll notice my elevation keeps getting higher and higher the further to the back of the head that I'm going this is what's called peak curvature elevation so the advantage of it is that it ends up cutting a curved line not a straight line so I'm actually mimicking the head shape as I'm beveling my line. Now here on the other side, this is my left side, I'm going to match exactly what I did on the right side all the way through until I run out of hair. After I've done that, I'm going to check it and see how it feels, see where I need to take some hair out, where it's too heavy, where it's too thin. And so I'm going to go through now and do the same thing I did on my perimeter, which is use my Tokyo thinning scissors to point cut just the tips, probably the last two or three inches of the tip, so that I remove some weight and allow that some more movement. Remove my perimeter line because I've already cut that. I've already thinned it too, so I don't want to go through and thin it again. Section by section, just diligently repeating the scissor strokes that I was doing before. Trying to follow the same elevations that I was doing before. I don't have to be as methodical because I'm not cutting straight lines, but I still have to be diligent about not thinning the same section twice. Once I run out of hair, I'll do the same thing on the other side. So haircut's finished. We got everything done. Let's go through and blow it dry and put a little bit of a bend in it. The hair's already dry. I already blew it straight with just a paddle brush. Now I want to put a little bit more of a bend in it and a little bit more polish. So just hitting it with the blow dryer, round brushing it through, and just giving the, the, those ends a little bit more polish. Everything kind of going down and forward around the face to help fill in that face framing. And then on the top, I'm just going to curl everything back. So it's a very basic kind of blow dry, and I want to make sure I get a lot of heat applied. Check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of educational content on there. You can also post your own work and interact with us directly. Here's our end result. I think it looks pretty good. It's nice and solid, but the ends are very soft. The layering is seamless. It moves back out of the face, but it's still heavy and solid. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.